Okay, guys, um, I have an interesting one for you today. I was curious about um, Queen's Gambit because I had a friend at work who was watching the series on Netflix, I believe. And um, so I decided to play uh, Beth Harmon of uh, Queen's Gambit. It's, it's, it's the AI. So, And it looks like uh, 1,600 currently is what my rank is. So let's see what the game looks like. It's not a perfect game, but I only had one blunder, which wasn't bad. Eight mistakes, which I guess are reasonable, but the blunders are what kills you. So one blunder in a 1600 game against the AI. So let's see. She was only 10 at 1600, which is insane. But anyway, let's look at how it went. I'm not going to break down the play-by-play. -play. You guys could just look at the moves because this game was a, l a little bit long, so I want to kind of power through it a bit, okay? So here we go. That's an interesting check by the queen to get that pawn back. So you get it free, but it's really not free. See it all the time. This is a good formation, though. Uh, if you can open where you got uh, your your center pawns active and it's a classic formation so right here there's nothing too insane right now so we're lining up for setting up for a few trades about to happen so we got the pool party going at mid so if you look at the position um seems like uh, i'm a little more developed than the ai but does it really mean much probably not so here we go take Take, take. Now, I took up this way with this bishop to ruin that castle option on that side, okay, which I think is a good option. But rather than, see, the computer always goes, I will tell you this, the computer always goes for the most efficient move. So rather than take the bishop, the fact that the computer knows it has the bishop, it'll disregard that move and then make the next move because that would be more efficient. So, for instance, if it took the bishop on this move instead of moving that pawn down, that would be considered a mistake. So, the mistakes are very soft and very subtle, and blunders are obvious. So, I just wanted to point that out. So, the, the better move was to threaten the horse rather than to take the bishop. But anyway, now he takes the bishop. So, once I withdraw my horse... He takes the bishop, and what, and the goal there was to force my horse to underdevelop. So it's a good strategy. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want to trade queens. The queen's gambit is afraid of my queen. <laughs> Uh, maybe I had a better position. I don't know. But anyway. That was a good spear. Look at this spear right here. Boom. To finish it off. So nothing was free. A lot of interesting stuff going on. And actually right now. She's uh, ahead a piece, you know? She's ahead a piece. And I don't remember how I got that piece back, but we'll see. Maybe on an AI blunder. Yeah, she's still ahead. I don't really remember where I got that piece back at. Maybe on good pawn play. I mean, look at my one pawn. Very deep. Um, and I, I definitely remember swiping some pawns here. So I thought he was going to take that. She was going to take that pawn, but she doesn't. Oh, I just pushed to the other rook. 
which I thought that was a mistake, but oh, that's what it is. Okay, so basically, um, I have more pawn material. Uh, now, to be honest. I thought that king should have been taken that pawn center and gotten further down. I don't see the point. Maybe, again, the computer can decide it can take that whenever it wants. So that's probably maybe why it skips it. But anyway. So we're doing a dance here. So here's a case where you have a bishop versus just simply more material. And what happens is if the king races over to play that pawn on the on the far left side, well, I'll probably promote a queen on the on the right side. So this is where um, you start to see that. So what I simply do here is I just push the pawns to the white right there, see? And I leave them there for the rest of the game until I will focus on this right side. And again, I'm not a great player. I'm just uh, fundamentally okay. So we're going to trade this out. Yep. There we go. The March of the Penguins. Ooh. Ooh. So we do a little dance here between the, the check and... Check, not check. Now, I gave up, um, I believe, my pawn here, knowing I would get, I forget, let's see. Yeah, I, so, so I move on that one. Oh, yeah, that's right, he couldn't take it, yeah, so that was pretty much game. So... After that, I just babysat that one pawn, pushed this one pawn up. Now I force a trade here because I know I got two queens. Yeah, see, that's it. It's worth the trade. Get the bishop off the board, force that, and then just develop the rest of the queen. Let's get the second queen on. And then so we got the queen, the end of the queen's. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a decent game by myself at 1,600. So, obviously, at the very least, I'm a 1,600 player. Um, so, any further than that is pretty much where my... And that's a respectable rating, to be honest, because tournament-level players, entry level to the beginning of Masters is 2,000. So, but there is a quite of a difference there. That 400 point swing is fairly significant. So, but anyway, I'll see you later, guys.